the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire so now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified the word of his grace hallelujah now let me say this to all of you and listen to me carefully the greatest intention of God for every Christian is that they should be conformed in character and power to the image of Christ what God desires for every one of us is that when we when he looks at us we should be exactly like Christ what God desires for every one of us is that our life should be an expression of the grace and the glory of God that when men see you they see him remember in John 14 verse 1 Jesus to verse 3 Jesus said to Philip he said if you have seen me that's I think verse 4 to 6 if you have seen me you have seen the father so until you come to that place where your life is a full reflection of the character of Christ your alignment to God is not yet perfect which means there are still things in your life that needs to be taken away that is why in our work with God there's some Jesus said in John 15 verse 1 he said any tree that bear fruit my father prunes that he may bear much more fruit so in our work with God God constantly takes things away from us and add things in our life those things which he takes away are the things which do not reflect Christ and the things which he adds are the things we need to reflect Christ so God is doing a work now in your life the work of the Holy Spirit is to perfect men into the image of Christ by aligning them through the knowledge of Christ through the teaching of Christ so the Holy Ghost assignment now is to bring you to the place where your life fully reflect Christ his assignment is not just to give you marriage forget those things those things are parts of what you have on earth or you are blessed we agree but the true assignment of the Holy Ghost is to perfect every man into the image of Christ by aligning them through the teaching of Christ which means every time we teach the gospel the Holy Ghost takes you and makes you become like Jesus Christ there are in our days now people go to church because they want things but it was not ordained so God's major intention is that you should become so every good pastor is the one that commits himself to making men into the image of Christ before giving them the things in Christ a good pastor will teach for long because he knows that only through teaching can you become like Christ you must be careful listen to me my dear people of God we live in dangerous times and the salvation of the world in these days depends on the strength of the church governments are failing societies are failing so the salvation of the world in the end times is a function of the strength and the glory of the church things are going off diseases are coming up that cannot be cured medically so the church needs to have an anointing that can heal all sicknesses it will attract men to god the wisdom of men is failing wars in every nation and the wars are not ending more wars are coming up that's the truth because satan is as is encroaching to express his purpose through the the hearts of men so the church is the only hope now I repeat again the only hope of salvation for the world in the end times is the glory and the strength of the church there is nothing else 
today we find something very strange that people come to church oh god help me here please don't misunderstand me please i beg you and we preach and we pray and people fall under the anointing in church there is light in our communities there is darkness so when they leave church they go back to immorality they go back to witchcraft so in church we preach liberty we preach the power of the holy ghost but when they leave our communities are still held bound by darkness you come to a town like this kumba for example you find immorality rampant or cultism is taking over young people are being captured by the devil of drugs drug even deep to primary school in this town they are taking drugs young men are becoming zombies because they are being possessed by the devil through drugs they are panting for drugs they, they they have been become something else you find young men that have become caricatures in their life because all they live for is for drugs they, yet we are in church boasting that people are falling if the church does not raise men that have the image of christ the church will be unable to conform their environment to the nature of god until we have young people in church that have grown in wisdom and grace we need to send one man to fiango and you change it but you find today don't be angry with me i'm your brother and your pastor but you find today immorality is becoming more rampant in church what kind of thing is that our daughters who are so-called saved daughters in christ look at the way they dress look at the way they talk look at what they post on, on social media you are and this is the church you cannot change them if you are like them you can't dress like them talk like them act like them and expect to have any impact on them it is impossible that is why when god wants to do something with a man the first thing he does is to separate you from the well he said come out of them my people and be separate before god can use moses he must take him out of egypt but if you look at today it, it is bad it is bad so paul began to cry he said there is something i need of these people there is a word that can build you up listen to me i've told you all the time a creeping church <laughs> where members are weak temptation they fornicate temptation they lie any they cannot stand anything that is a weak church and a weak church is is is, is produced by weak teaching it's the message from the altar that determines the strength of the church when he said they that know their god shall be strong you see that there is a knowledge that imparts strength so it is the teaching of the knowledge of christ that imparts strength to the church and empowers them to do exploits for christ we teach them they become strong we need strong we need strong daughters not daughters when they say i will marry you you go and sleep with a man what is that just just i will marry you is enough We need young men who are strong. Not little trial, they want to scam. Little poverty, they want to steal. Young men that are strong in character, who are not moved by money, they are only moved by the voice of God. We need to raise men and women in church that are strong. That's why today we have people in church for 10 years. They become, give them one job in an office and they steal more than unbelievers. Come on. So Paul said, I want you to be built up that you can be strong because darkness is taking over the world we need men and women that are strong when joseph enters egypt god has prepared him so potiphar's wife cannot move him we need men like that when esther entered babylon god has prepared her so the immorality the corruption and the decadence in babylon cannot move esther in the days of esther every woman was immoral in that town except her in fact, Esther even refused makeup. She said, I don't want to come. Everybody did makeup. She said, Don't give me makeup. That is you we will live today. If an unbeliever does a new style, tomorrow you see it on Christians. Hey, hey, we that are born of God, 
we that have the Holy Spirit, we are the ones to introduce to the world the dimensions of God not yet seen. Can I tell you something shocking? In every Christian is hidden a dimension of God waiting to unveil itself to the world through manifestation. Through his manifestation. In every one of you, God is there. There is something God wants to do. Yours may not be in church. It can be in business, in, 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 in politics. But hear me, when we have weak Christians, we cannot take over the society. They can't start the start business today. Christians, small business, they are they are yeah, 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 yeah. unfaithful. There is something in your life that you need to bring forth. Ask yourself, has your Christianity impacted your family? What have you brought to your family because you are a Christian? There is darkness over the world. He said, arise and shine for your light has come. He said, darkness covers the earth. Thick darkness covers the people, but on you there is light. That light gives you the ability to navigate through darkness. That is the light of God in your heart. The light of God in the heart of a Christian is what gives him the ability and wisdom to navigate through darkness without being corrupted. Send them to America now. They spray their hair yellow. They put earring. This young man that was here and was serving God in church, travels abroad, and he puts earring. It took just two months for the devil of America to swallow his Christianity because he was a weak one. See them here now, looking holy. Look at them looking at me. Let them pass exam and go to University of Boya. And you see the way these same daughters will dress. And you are amazed. Is it not the sister I saw in the choir in Kumba? Look at that. It took just three months when she entered Boya. She changed and became something else. Corrupted by the system because her Christianity was weak. If you faint in the day of adversity, then your strength was small. So our interest is to impart strength. So Paul says, my desire is that you should be built up. That's what a pastor who loves you will focus on building you. Not on making you dependent on him. Because you have to grow. You have to grow. You have to grow. To take over various aspects of life, you have to grow. You have to grow. We cannot boast ourselves. Power is not the ability to make men fall. Power is the ability to raise men up. Do you know that you can fall by mistake? You cannot claim by mistake. You, you can fall from a ladder by mistake. You cannot claim up by mistake. No, but when it has to go up, there is a certain force that may be exerted. To fall, it can be a mistake. To rise, it is intent. So when we speak of power, the power of Christ is not the power of Christ in a man is not his ability to make men fall it is his ability to raise men up and make them stand that is power that you came to that church and after one year you cannot stand in business stand as a good wife stand as a good husband you cannot stand that means you have, you have seen power but as long as we think that power do people fall yes but that's just the first phase it shouldn't end there but now we are more happy that people fail. How many men after falling rose up and became strong in life? What will it profit this man to fall and wake up and go back to, to smoke and drink? If the power that made him fall cannot break the yoke of alcohol, then something is wrong. The power that made them fall in church, when they wake up, they must come out. Because when you fall under the anointing, when you come more physically, spiritually, you are coming out of the place of darkness. Which means you are coming out of immorality. Coming out of anger. The people fall and wake up with malice in their hearts. We can't impact the society. So guess what? Our strength stays only in such church. Weak in the market. Weak in school. Weak. Swallowed by the system. But I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, God will give you grace. 
God will give you strength. And you, I say you, you will stand. I said you will stand. And you will create a godly impact in your environment. Have a stronger desire than yourself. You are not ready for God until you deny yourself. You, you still want to dress like them. My sister, when you are ready, come, we'll mentor you. For now, I'm going to be plain. Young men are not ready. They are not ready to follow God. They are still jumping from girl to girl. You are not ready at all. You have, your, your eye has not been open. Listen to me. It is the consciousness of the weight of your destiny that will discipline your feet to walk on the way of righteousness. You, you don't know who you are. You are just living. When you will know, Esther cannot be joking with fornication because she knows that on her shoulder is a destiny to save the Jews. And for her to do that assignment, she must be a virgin. So no matter that Babylon was a corrupted nation, but a woman was still a virgin. In, in the midst of corruption, she was still a virgin. It is possible to be in darkness and be the light. It is possible that everyone is going wrong and you are right. It is possible. He said, my son, if sinners entice you to sin, consent not. Don't give your agreement to evil. Don't give your consent to go in the wrong way. No. Are you conscious of what you are here to do? There are certain young men, some of even pastors, I just laugh. Somebody has... You have had five fiance. I say you are not. You don't. You are just joking. It is my fiance. I know. It's not my new fiance. I don't say I can no longer pray for you. You are not serious with your life. We are not. We are not in the game here. Joseph understood the weights on his shoulder. When Potiphar's wife came naked, he said, "I won't touch you." When, you know when you know that God counts on you, you will change the way you live. You just sleep from 8 to 6. You don't wake up. You, just, you don't know that the, the destiny of your family is on your shoulder. That's why you sleep. When you will know that your prayer can save your father from death, you will start praying. You have to force you to pray because you don't know who you are. Nobody tells me to pray because I know. Anytime I look at you, I feel the weight of your life on my shoulder. I have to pray. There's no option. The life I live is constrained by the call of God on my life. There are things which are not sinful, but I cannot do them. There is something on your life. There is a call. There is an assignment that you are called to enter and fulfill. But for you to do that assignment, you need to grind. Wake, wake up. Wake up. For how long shall we complain that people are dying? Who will follow God and take a grace to heal the sick? For how long will we complain? One Elijah, one showed up and put an end to the worship of Baal in Israel. One Esther stood up and saved an entire more than six million Jews saved by one woman. One Joseph stood up and saved the entire world. It took just one. How many Christians are we today in Cameroon? We cannot do anything. Weak Christianity. Weak churches. Weak pastors. Weak altars full of boasting and pride the bankruptcy in manifestation what can I do Lord so I begin to ask the Lord what do we do my father what do we do what do we do what do we do we stand here on my birthday I saw orphans and, and handicapped I couldn't watch them. I had to leave. I saw people who are suffering. And I told myself, Kevin, poverty is not an option for you. There are too many people that need me to prosper for them to survive. I can't, this is this, the way where my life is. It's not like that, I cannot die. This is, I'm no longer living for myself. There is too much attached to my life for it to be taken anyhow. I don't play with my life. And the devil cannot joke with it. God himself does not play because God knows what he has ordained and sent me for. I want to ask you, do you know your relevance to God's plan on earth now? You that are married, my sister, do you know why God sent you to that family? Paul said, what if, he said, husband, he said, wife, what if your husband will be saved by you? You don't have to read that verse. First Corinthians 7. 
He said, and your husband, what if you will save your wife? So Paul says there is a possibility that a family can be saved because of a wife or a husband. That God sent you there. So you are, you are bearing all the pains in that home because you want to save that man and his family. Do you know why you are here? What are you doing? Why are you living a double life? You come to church, wave your hands. Hallelujah. You go to school, you are a different person. If they should take your private life and make it public, will you be ashamed? If you'll be ashamed, something is wrong. Live the kind of life that if they make your private life public, you have nothing to be afraid of. I'm not saying it can be perfect, but to the best of your working with God, there are things you should avoid by all means. So Paul, God now began to teach me that the only thing I can do for my people to rise and stand is to teach them his word. If you watch well, from the month of August, I have taught nothing else except the word. Every teaching is the word. Because I want you to stand. You have been falling since. After you fall, you come and ask me, house friends. I need to start having sense. That that falling is not changing your life. You fall, fall from, from, from 2015, say, Papa, I pay my rent. I should not begin to think, wait, as a pastor, I need to love you also. What will happen to your own life? What will happen to your destiny? So I start thinking, say, look at this young man. How, what can I teach this man? After seven years, he cannot pay rent. Kevin, okay, something is wrong. Teach him well. And I'm working now deeply because I look at your life. I, listen, don't be angry. Oh. Some of you are weak. So weak. You can't keep following and come and say, Father, forgive me. I've sinned again. Stop that kind of life. We have assignment to do here. Sin will delay and distort your time and purpose in your calling in life. Be careful. But a man cannot fight sin if he's not strong. So in a, Paul now said, I give you to the Lord and to the word of his grace. That, that can do what? That is able to build you. So there's one thing that can build. Two things. It will build you and it will give you an inheritance lift your hands in the name of jesus my heart is open to the word of god so to get that thing i need to first explain that what is the grace of god because it is the word of his grace so we need to know his grace number one the grace of god is the character of his kindness that compels him to do good to men through his mercy the grace of god is the character of his kindness that compels him to do good to men through his mercy let's see psalms 86 verse 15 but you O lord are a god read full of compassion and gracious long suffering and abundant in mercy and truth so grace is his character you so you can't grace is his nature you can't this grace is a nature of god that's who he is so if god gives you grace he has given you part of himself i are you getting that so grace is the character the nature of god he said for you oh god they are what gracious bring it up again come full of compassion read to me please but you all lord are a god full of compassion and gracious long suffering and abundant in mercy and truth friend the major reason why people cannot relate with god well is that they don't know god well it is important that you know god he said for you listen to me can i tell you something here oh zakatis kofede brother shibala uh, i sometimes i feel pain in my heart because many of us have failed because we don't know our god there's a problem that adam had the trouble that adam had was that when adam committed sin adam ran from god because he didn't know god He knew that God would come and kill him. Listen to me. God said to Adam, he said, don't eat from the tree, right? For the day you eat it, you shall die. Not so. He didn't say, for the day you eat it, I shall kill you. Talk to me now. Satan makes men think that the commandments of God is for God's good. No. 
Adam don't eat Satan will make you feel like if you eat God will kill you no if you fornicate it's not God that comes to make you sick it is Satan Satan manipulates men to disobey God's commandments because their disobedience opens the door for him to touch them it is not God that kills you because you sinned no through Adam he says sin entered the world and through sin death entered so have an understanding therefore God is a gracious God if you know him confidence come from knowing God now I'm not approving sin but look at a man like David David took somebody's wife slept with her killed the man when when Nathan the prophet said David you are finished David went lie down seven days and cried oh God forgive me but when Saul disobeyed God he did not know to ask forgiveness Peter denied Jesus and asked for forgiveness Judas betrayed Jesus and went and hung himself what is that knowledge they that know their God there is nothing that separates them from their God even their mistake cannot separate them from God when a man knows God the more he is weak the more he goes to God God I'm your son help me he said for my grace is made perfect in your weakness the more a man knows God the more a man desires to be with God today our picture we have of God is one man with white, white long beard yeah, with a sword or with a stick what did you say you will go to hell hell go and burn that's not God even when God tells you not to sin it's because he knows the effect of sin in your life Jesus said to the man he says do not sin if not something worse will happen to you sin does not affect God sin affects man do you understand what I'm trying to explain to you so it's God's nature God is a gracious God it's part of him it's who he is and the Bible says God cannot deny himself God is gracious God will always be gracious once you know that you will never be afraid to approach him even if you made a mistake because you are approaching a gracious God when you know God listen to me if you check today in church people are afraid of God the fear of God is not to be afraid of God fear of God is reverence is honor to God but today people are Bible says where there is fear there is judgment for perfect love cast out fear where you know no people are afraid people, that's why listen to me as a pastor i've learned something which i i'm working on it when i see anybody in this church that fears me i try to stop it because they don't have to fear me honor is not fear they have to honor me not fear me like you see, the temple, i say no don't don't be panicking because fear is an expectation of evil it's different from honor there are many people who don't honor their pastor they simply fear him and the day they stop fearing him their rebellion will be strong but when people honor their pastor even in his mistake they will still honor him honor is not fear that is why i try my best that people should not be, Papa, i said no don't don't panic i'm a man like you calm down because the anointing don't panic i'm not there for that is why we do not walk by saying if you if you speak against me you will die no any gospel that that inspires fear in the hearts of men is initiated by bitterness and the spirit of the antichrist if you leave this church you will die why if you leave this church why, why should you die by leaving the church people left jesus and they did not die in fact angels left heaven they did not die so what is the church but you see, it's built on fear. Don't speak against the man of God or you will die. Mm. You should not speak against the man of God because God commands you not to speak against him. If, it's, if fear is your motivation, you will one day fail. But if love is your motivation, you will be constant. There are homes today, they fear, a, a man comes, his wife is a, your wife is afraid to give you advice. My brother, I repent to where there is true love brings liberty but the liberty is not used to indulge sin you understand i am free with my wife she feel with me but she will not dishonor me but trust me if i say she's free she's free love brings trust confidence when somebody loves you they can expose their weakness to you because they know you will cover them you understand when listen when people are conscious of your love for them they can expose their weakness to you because they know you will cover it 
if your husband is afraid to tell you his mistakes it's because he's not sure that you love him that was his love covered sin so god is what gracious talk to him as your father father i have made this mistake father i need help here father there is a temptation taking over me lord each time i sit down i think about this man i think about this woman help me overcome these thoughts you, well, you know he's gracious you this, some people now prayer is one they'll come father i come to thee thou benevolent magnificent full of all grace compassion and beatitudes i don't understand god knows the way you talk why are you changing your voice in prayer people come to prayer and say lord god the great and mighty god faithful in all your ways the afternoon prayer i mean hi this is god knows the way you talk tell somebody be real <laughs> never try to impress god i go to my second point number two the grace of god is the foundation of his relationship with men This will be shocking to you. Show me Second Corinthians 12, verse 9 to 10. And he said to me, For my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Look here, look here, look here. The grace of God is the foundation of what? which means god relates to you according to his grace that is why <laughs> your hatred for somebody cannot make god to hate them you don't own the heart of god one day you'll be shocked that the people you will hate because of their sin god still loves them I'm telling you because god relates by grace it's not by work you know today the worst thing that people are trying to do they are trying to deserve their fellowship with god no god comes to you listen to me man is imperfect man is weak so for god to relate with you although you are weak he puts grace as a foundation so in the building called relationship with god grace is foundation so god lays the foundation himself of his relationship with man by grace so all you are doing is building on what on the grace of god one thing you must fight as a christian is the feeling is the is feeling undeserving of the love of god that is foolishness we don't deserve his love his love is a gift of his grace you don't deserve his blessing his blessing is a gift of his grace don't try to impress god don't try to there is nothing you can do to make god love you more his love is a gift of grace build on that thing because many of us can i tell you something here it will be shocking but listen to me jesus said he that is forgiving more loves more what does that mean people who know that they never deserve god's love and they are loved they love god more you know why because they are more conscious of the gifts they have received People say, since they born me, I never smoke, I never drink, I never follow woman. Such people tend to be proud, even in Christ. They think that their human works is the reason why God is promoting them. They don't know that Paul said, by his grace, I am what I am. You must grow to understand this, that there are many mistakes you have made in the world. But when God comes to you, he puts his grace as a foundation and says, build on it, my child. So you find a, a murderer like Saul that killed people in church he now becomes an apostle of god that there is, jesus was appearing to paul almost every night and talking with him as a friend but he's a murderer you find a woman like mary magdalene a prostitute yes she's the one that jesus speaks to what did these men do because they understood the mystery of the grace of god that when god comes to you forget the past of abortion witchcraft killing stealing god says hey i have put a foundation my grace stand on it and deal if you stand on your works it is sinking sand remember our song christ is my firm foundation what is the firm foundation he's the rock on which i stand not my prayer is my firm what is your firm foundation christ 
when everything around me is shaking it's because they are built on sinking sand but i put my faith in jesus many people put their faith in their in their in their biological background my father was a pastor forget those things bible says our righteousness is a dirty rack before god i have not sinned i have not lied i have never fornicated when we all enter we have the same foundation both the man that never killed in the world and the man who killed in christ all stand on the foundation called grace listen to me you are not undeserving the grace of god has qualified you for the love of god qualified you for his mercy qualified you for his grace god knew you could not do it on your own so he came and did it for you why don't you just receive what god is giving you there are people who think they have to fast for God to forgive them. Ignorance is killing them. Forgiveness is purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. They don't understand. So people come to pray and they feel like, Prophet, can you pray for me? God, the way I hate that speech. Why should God hear me more than you? All of us are his children. It is just my faith that makes me see him more than you. Pray is your father. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I just came to you. Help me in my life. I'm tired of this thing. Talk to him. He is gracious and he has put, listen, grace is the carpet. If you are coming to God, he unrolls the red carpet. Say, walk on this grace and come. You now begin to come. So we approach God, not on the basis of our human works, but on the basis of the grace released by the sacrifice of Christ. That's how we come to God. Understand it today, never forget it. That any time in your life, when Satan reminds you of your past, it reminds him of the grace of God. Tell him that today I'm talking to God. Listen to me, if you know the kind of things I have done in my past, you will know that there was no, I am the most unworthy man to be a prophet. But Paul said, I was called by the grace of God. If they were voting prophet, even me, I would not vote for myself. Because I was a bad man, the worst of sinners. But the grace of God found me. I didn't find grace. Grace found me. Grace found you. Stop feeling condemned. That is why Satan takes advantage of the consciousness of sin to afflict and oppress men in bondage. You keep thinking, oh, I did this in the past. My past. Listen to you see me like this. Kevin Dubiga, my past is over. I, have, I don't stay in that house again. And my past is over. I'm going to say he was, he was. I have changed address. My past is over. There is no devil. Listen to me. Sometimes you sit down. Satan tries to make you remember. My past is over. Yes, I did it. I'm not proud of it. I'm proud of his forgiveness. He has forgiven me. Are you understanding me? Number three. The grace of God is Can I say his strength? The grace of God is the strength of God imparted to men to help them do his will. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. He said, my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. The greatest reason why many fail even in church is because they have no knowledge of the place of grace in doing the will of God by the bible says by the flesh by strength shall no man prevail bible says again the arm of the flesh shall fail the only possibility for you to do the will of god on earth is to secure the grace of god if god wants you to do something for him he gives you grace to do it do you understand me this is why we pray all the time we pray to secure grace I want to marry. I want to marry. I've, I've met him. He's a gentleman. He's a calm. Leave those stories. My sister, go and pray and secure grace. Because when you enter marriage, when Satan comes to resist your marriage, it is the grace you have that will keep you standing. Jesus said, my grace is sufficient. For when you are weak, my strength is made perfect. So grace is strength. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There is a strength I have. The strength to do well. Do you know that there are many people living a life they don't want to live? They don't want to smoke, but they are smoking. They don't want to drink, they are drinking. Do you know why? There is no strength in the arm of the flesh to resist the promptings and the power of sin. It takes the grace of God. If you want to break out of sin, you need to, you need to receive grace. That's why we do not preach sin. 
we preach Christ. So by preaching Christ, grace will come that will make you come out of sin. There are people who are in fornication that every time they fornicate, they cry. Say, Lord, Lord, why? They want to break out of it. But you know what is happening to them? They are held bound by sin. And the grace of God is the way out. When God gives you grace, he has strengthened you. He says, sin will not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, you are under grace. If there's something you must never forget. If you read throughout the whole Bible, in every letter of Paul or Peter, he began by saying, grace be to you. Lord, I receive your grace today. I receive your grace today. That's strength. Whenever you feel weak, what do you do? You draw grace. How do you draw strength from grace? By confessing, I receive grace. I will not fall. There are times there is a temptation which is strong. Strong on your life. It can be to fornicate or to lie or to steal. What do you do? Grace. I receive grace. It will strengthen you. It will, it will empower you grace is that strength friend i am not afraid of greatness because i know that grace is the enhancer of greatness i listen to me there is nothing that frightens me if god says kevin go to coca now and start church there i will go tomorrow do you know why because i will go with the grace of god after one year you will come there and see something else I know it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit. Everything is possible if you can lay hold of the grace of God. So pray for grace. Go for grace. Do the things which attract the grace of God. By doing such, you are putting yourself in that place where you can do well in life. I am what I am by the grace of God. So grace is the strength. I pray for you. Receive the grace of God in the name of Jesus Christ. you are afraid say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me lift your hands say in the name of Jesus I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me my strength is in the grace of God I will never be weak for when I am weak through the grace of God I am strong in the name of Jesus. Amen. Confess it all the time. I can't fail in business. I have grace to do well in business. There is grace. Listen to me. God's will is only done by grace. You can't do his will by sense. Ah, did you hear that? You can't do the will of God by sense. It is done by grace. There is a requirement. People step into marriage and find hell because they thought they can enter marriage. No, it's not by sense. Any marriage that is good and standing in the will of God is because grace has been supplied. I pray for you. I decree grace is supplied to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said grace is supplied to you. Grace in your spirit. Grace in your marriage. Grace. Lift your hands up. Grace. Grace, grace, grace. I see. Grace, grace, grace. All I see is grace. Grace, grace, grace. I see grace. Grace, grace, grace. All I see is grace. I cannot fail. When the enemy comes and they are pushing me and they know that Kevin is finished, they don't understand how the, the finished man stands again. They, so many times Satan thought he had killed me and I said oh Satan you rejoice too soon I am still here how do I do it the grace of God they have used all systems sickness poison charm armed robbers assassins but they don't understand how do this man escape always when they see me weak you listen to me the grace of God if you don't understand grace jealousy will kill you because you see a man physically weak but how did man did do the thing? Grace. You will see you, some of you, you know pride. That pride that makes you think that you are better than that sister. And she is doing better than you. See you, you know if you find yourself. How all man do I marry Nayi? Grace. You see you, all your fine, you see you with your fine, fine you fine, fine, you see your, where your fineness I take you to. 
See the man, oh, he didn't pray, let me say, I'll be prayer warrior, I'll be prayer warrior. Behind the prophesy so, grace, 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 as Grace, 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 all I see is grace. Grace, 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 I see grace. Grace, 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 all I see is grace. When you look at the flesh, you'll be weak. When you look at grace, you'll be strong. Never say, I cannot do it. What is the meaning of I? I. I am that I am. The first I am is God. The second I am is me. I am strong. I am rich. When I say I am rich and there is no money in my hand, I'm speaking of my spiritual reality. And as I confess it, it becomes my physical experience. I am rich. I am strong. I am more than able. I know if you do me. I know if you do me. I don't know me. Stop that! Sister, Tomorrow you lead, you lead praise. Hey, hey, to stand in that church in front of everybody, I will not be able to. If you talk like that, you need to be whipped. I can do all things. When we say tomorrow you will preach here, just know, Father, I depend on your grace. You don't say, I don't have any rema. Whether you have rema or not, when you stand there and you depend on grace, it will not be you talking. The grace of God will take over, vitalize you, quicken you, empower you, give you wisdom, enlighten you, and you will say words that you don't know. You will do things you don't understand. Why? Because grace. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life has changed. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life has changed. Sit down. Hey. You in the night. You have a vision where you built a house. You wake up and say, I can do it. Do not measure your strength by your physical and financial capacity. Measure your strength by the grace of God. When God gives you something to do, don't check your bank account. Check the spirit account. When God asks you, if God says, get married, don't say, I don't have money, I have grace. If God says, build a church, don't say, I don't have money, you have grace. Don't check your bank account. Check your spirit account. He said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. It's the same yesterday. It's the same today. It's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Grace is on your side. Favor is on your side. Grace is on your side. Lift your hands up, grace. Sit down. Do you know why you feel weak? Can I tell you why? Because you are checking your physical strength. Anything. And I don't have money. I don't have money. I don't have... Ah! Why are you talking? I don't have money. I don't have nobody to help me. I'm just alone. Get that foolish confession. Is why you are limited. Is you are limiting yourself by your mouth. All things are possible. Possibilities are hidden in grace. If you can access grace, it becomes a reality. Don't be afraid to do the work. Don't be afraid to travel. Don't be afraid to start the business. Don't be afraid. What God commands, He empowers to do. There is grace. I hear that in that village, eh, people are dying. What kid then can't kill me? There is grace. I came by another force. I came by another intelligence. I came by another technology. Look at, listen to me. You can see me standing here looking small. But let me tell you something. The size of my body does not make sense with the size of my workings. When you see the things I do, you say, now they man that. You know by everything that is not this man that can be doing these things. There must be a greater one in me. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. There is grace. 
Pick up your life and succeed. Stop saying there's nobody to help me. I will help myself. There is grace. I must rise. There is grace. You dry your kabbalaka out of your belly, not out of heaven. Out of your belly, not out of the belly of the pastor. Out of your belly, so you can draw grace, draw strength. I can do it. I am more than able. I am more than capable. A G he said, My grace is so fee. What is sufficient means? It means with grace you need nothing else. Three facts about grace. Number one, the grace of God is made available by the sacrifice of Christ. John 1 14 to 16. He said, Jesus came full of grace and truth. Number one, the grace of God is made available by the sacrifice of Christ, which means grace is not made available by your prayer. The grace of God is made available, sorry, to all men by the sacrifice of Christ. Titus 2 11. He said, The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. John 1 14 16. Jesus came full of grace and truth. The grace of God has been made available to all men through the sacrifice of Christ. So don't say that I don't know where grace is. Grace is in Jesus Christ. Receive him and receive grace. Someone says it's available. Shout it loud. Shout it loud. Shout it loud. So is grace in heaven? No. Grace is here. When Jesus came on earth, he brought grace on the earth realm. In the whole Old Testament, only about two people found grace. Noah and Moses. It was a rare event that when Jesus was born, he made sure that everyone can enter the economy of the grace of God. Everyone. So there is a possibility you can do more than Moses. Listen to me. God does not want you to do what Moses did. If not, why did he create you? You are not a photocopy. I am not another Elijah. I am a caving. There is something a caving has to do. Those men are examples and references. Never ever try to limit your life to the life of another person. You are an original copy, born for a specific purpose. All you need is to secure grace for your own assignment and do well in this earth realm. So grace, number one, is made available. Number two, the grace of God is given by the teaching of the gospel of Christ. I begin to see now. Second Peter 1, verse 1 to 4. We're not ready because of time. The grace of God is made what? Is given now. So, grace can be available, but for it to be given is when they teach. Every time there is a teaching, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. Every time there is a teaching of the gospel of Christ, what happens to the atmosphere? The grace begins to come. Grace only responds to the knowledge of Christ. He said, let grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of Christ. So the more you know Christ, the more grace is given. So if I come to church, every time I teach about Jesus, grace enters the atmosphere. Do you understand what I'm saying? Listen to me. What is airtime? We say credit. It's not MTN that makes it. Air. What is airtime? Those waves are there in every part of the world. But they have to put what they call a pole. True or false? That pole is what captures that network and makes it available to that place. You understand? So it is given by teaching. So every time you want to know where grace is, grace is where they teach about Christ. Whenever the teaching of the gospel is done, like I'm doing now, what is in the atmosphere? Say, I receive my own. Number three, grace is received through faith. Now, you see now, made available. Grace is received through faith in Christ. It is made available through the sacrifice of Christ. It is given by the teaching of the gospel of Christ. It is received by faith in Christ. Ephesians 2, verse 8. R Romans 5, verse 2. Let's see Romans 5, 2. He said, through faith, we stand in this grace. Through whom also, speaking of Jesus, speaking of verse 1. From verse 1, please. Thank you. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. 
and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So how do we access grace? So he who does not believe cannot receive grace. So grace can be given and you do not receive because you never had faith. And I'm talking like this. Those who have faith are receiving grace. Those who have doubts are receiving nothing. They can clap, they can shout, they receive nothing. It can only be received by faith. Whenever you believe the gospel of Christ, you are receiving grace in you, in your spirit. Do you understand me? So do everything to believe it. Amen. So now, what is the word of his grace? What is the word of his grace? I've explained grace. Let me go to that then. I pray with you. And we'll receive what the Lord has prepared for us in Jesus' name. Number one, the word of his grace is the word that builds men up through the knowledge of who Christ is and who they are in Christ. The word of his grace oh, oh, let me just hear, yeah, well, anyway. Is the knowledge, is the word, sorry, that builds men up by giving them the knowledge of who Christ is and who they are in Christ. Number one, the word of his grace is the word that builds men up by giving them the knowledge of who Christ is and who they are in Christ. Let us see 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be seen for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Stop. Are we righteous by our prayer? Can I tell something here? Your dominion over sin, Satan, and this well begins with your consciousness that you are righteous in, in Christ Jesus. People are seeing to say, I am a poor sinner. Uh -uh. What kind of song is that? How can you be a poor sinner? You are not a sinner. What did he say? Jesus became sin that we might become. So, are you righteous? Some people they fear for talk. I say, hmm. Me, that fornicator, can I be righteous? Yes, you are righteous. You are fornicating because you are not conscious of the righteousness of God in you. So you are not flowing in holiness. Holiness is the fruit of the seed called righteousness. Righteousness is the seed or the root while holiness is the fruit. But holiness is only an expression outwardly of the inward righteousness. Anyone that has received Christ is what? Shout it loud. Start if you ever talk. Righteous means in right standing with God. It means you and God no get quarrel. Say, I am righteous. I am righteous. Do you know why you cannot say it? I say, hmm. But what thing I don't do? This is now what they call grace. I thought it was kindness. God decided that all our mistakes should be on Jesus Christ. So, Jesus became what we were so we can become who he was. Say, I am righteous. I am righteous. Shout it louder. Now, when you have this knowledge, you will now be compelled to walk in holiness. Ah, what is this? Shadakadoski. Borokosili de Bashandi. I speak the mercy of God. Something is wrong. Just bow your head and pray. Pray for your families. Father, we decree the hand of God is stretched. I decree that evil will not stand. Let mercy prevail. Let mercy prevail over judgment. Let mercy triumph over judgment now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So look at me. Say I am righteous. Righteous means you are a child of God. So you see who you are? This is the knowledge that builds you up. Knowing that you are righteous. So when you come to the place of prayer, you are not coming like a, like a poor sinner. You are coming like a righteous man speaking to your father. And you now ask God, give me grace to stop sinning because a righteous man does not sin. Sorry, does not continue in sin. You understand me? 
so the lifestyle of righteousness which we live comes from our understanding that we are righteous by the grace of God number two what is the word of his grace number two it is the word that gives men their inheritance in Christ through the knowledge of what Christ did for them it is the word that gives men their inheritance in Christ through the knowledge of what Christ did for them amen second Corinthians 8 verse 9 he said, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the word that gives men their inheritance in Christ. Through what? The knowledge of what Jesus Christ did for them. Now look, let me talk to you. There are two, there are many things, alright. I'll give it to you. Number one, forgiveness. Amen. The first thing that you have in God because of Jesus Christ is what? Forgiveness. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse, let's we'll take from verse um, <clears throat> verse 13. We'll take it to verse 16. But now in Christ Jesus, you who was who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Stop. You were far off, you have been done what? Brought near. By what? Shout it louder. Say, by the blood of Christ. Shout it louder again. Continue, sister. For he himself is at peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. He is our what? He is at peace. Continue. Mm -hmm. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments, contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two thus making peace okay just go to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 that's what I, that's what I want that one is good but this one is plenty better read in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace say my sins are forgiven the first thing you have in God because of Jesus is what? So you can put Ephesians 1 7. Forgiveness of sins. Friends, you don't have to, you don't buy forgiveness. You don't sow a seed to be forgiven. All you need to obtain forgiveness of sins. Okay, that's the one in Colossians 2. So Colossians 1 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Have you seen the two scriptures? Ephesians 1 7 and Colossians 1 14. We have what? Forgiveness of sins. So what do you have in Christ? So don't be carrying your sins. I fornicated. I lied. No, same, somebody say my sins are forgiven. Shout it louder. Now, don't forget that Satan takes advantage of your consciousness of sin to keep you in the midst of punishment for sin. Once you are conscious that your sins are forgiven, automatically the power of Satan is broken. Someone say forgiveness. Can I ask you a question? Have you forgiven yourself? Are you sure? Because many times God forgives us, but we don't forgive ourselves. Don't punish yourself for a sin that Christ was punished for. Friend, there are mistakes you will make in life. Don't allow the mistakes make you after. You have to learn how to move on with your life. You no, know, I'm good for nothing. I want to kill myself. I make, no, don't, don't talk like that. Your sins are forgiven. You may have made mistakes. You, you may have missed it. Truly, some people may regard you as bad forever because of your mistake god does not behave like that you can't go about trying to buy everyone's love for you sometimes in life forgive yourself and move ahead or receive it my sins are forgiven don't stay lamenting over the errors of your past if you focus on your past mistake, you will stay in the past. You can't move ahead thinking, la, la, oh, I fornicated too. I fornicated too. No. Your sins, God says, when I forgive, I remember no more. Do not retain remembrance of your sins. It will only attract Satan to you because Satan is attracted to sin. 
not only when you sin when you are cautious of sin satan will come so the cautiousness of sin attracts the hand and the work of satan in your life if you want satan to keep staying in your life keep talking about sin say my sins are forgiven number two that we have in christ is what health somebody say health i can hear your voice shout it louder health let's see first peter 2 24 our second inheritance is what health who himself bore our sins on his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes ye is it you are you will be if i was healed then i am healed say i am healed many people are not healed because they think that they can buy healing they want to sow seed to be healed healing cannot be bought jesus died for that if actually you give any offering is to express your faith but friend say health is mine now i'm not saying that those who died are bad no i'm saying that those of us who are alive we have to have this knowledge now that god god does not just want us to be healed he has done what it takes to be healthy say i'm healed by the blood of jesus don't try to earn healing hey, somebody else told me she said man of god i know that god is punishing me for my sins what happened i fornicated god give me hiv god does not give hiv stop that kind of nonsense talk it is satan that took advantage of your sin but now even when i was praying for her she could not be healed because she thought that her sickness was a rightful punishment for her sin no the rightful punishment for your sin is jesus christ on the cross i am healed satan you have no right to make me sick because you killed jesus on that cross i am healed by whose stripes we are healed someone say health is mine that's why you must learn to always take communion don't any small thing tablet anything give me a feather gun hey, give me a parasite more be careful learn to understand that christ paid for your healing his blood is the way take communion take communion vitalize yourself by faith i am healed Re obtain it by faith in christ say i'm healed say i refuse to be sick say sickness is not the will of god jesus is not sick i cannot be sick jesus was punished for my sins so today i receive my healing healing in my blood healing in my bones healing in my organs from the crown lay your hand on your head from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet the blood of jesus through the grace of god i am healed i am made whole no sickness can stay in my body no bacteria no virus no sickness can stay in my body for my body is the temple of the lord not the house of diseases i reject sickness i refuse to be sick sickness is evil sickness is of the devil healing is good healing is of god i reject evil i accept good i reject sickness i accept healing i take my health it is mine in christ in the name of jesus in say it in the name of jesus i stretch my hand stretch your hands i stretch my hands and i take my healing from the hands of jesus i take my healing from every kind of sickness and disease from the blood of jesus as sure as it is that jesus died for my sins so is it sure that i am healed by his blood i am healed i command every symptom in my body disappear and return no more i am not part of your kingdom i am the righteousness of god and i am full of the life of god my blood my flesh my bones hear the voice of the spirit you are healed you are made whole by the word of grace i command every organ in my body to function properly 
to function well every damaged organ by this word be repaired every destroyed organ by this word be replaced i am healed i am healthy any kind of sickness trying to take over my body i rebuke you in the name of jesus i resist you in the name of jesus and i say you will not have my body for my body is the temple of the lord in the name of jesus health is mine listen even if your faith is not too strong and you are taking medication be talking health is mine health is mine health is mine don't ever sit down and be meditating on symptoms on your body sickness will swallow you health is mine health is mine sometimes you have a pain in your stomach Satan will tell you that pain is liver there is no problem with my liver health is mine health is mine you confess it by his grace listen to me it, Jesus opens an account for you and says whenever you want to withdraw go to the bank and say in the name of Jesus and withdraw health I refuse to be sick I refuse to be sick no 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 it's not of God I refuse it the third inheritance there are many I'm telling you just number three is wealth someone say prosperity Second Corinthians 8 verse 9 he said you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich for your sakes he became poor rich that you through his poverty might become rich through his poverty might become so there is a grace that makes rich say my business must prosper, my business must prosper. lift your hands in the name of Jesus name of I am the righteousness of God a righteous man cannot be cursed for scripture declares that God surrounds the righteous with the blessing I am blessed all I do prosper I will not live by begging I will not live by borrowing I will live by the blessing and the grace of God lay your hand on your head my head is my mind is full of the wisdom of God to make wealth from today I draw wisdom from the grace of God I draw strength understanding abilities from the grace of God all I do we do well I am blessed nothing dies in my hand stretch your hands nothing dies in my hand whatever I touch is blessed whatever I touch prosper any business I invest in my profit comes in a hundredfold I am blessed blessed beyond the curse I am, I am blessed I am blessed beyond the curse I am blessed I am blessed by the blood of Jesus for by the blood of Jesus I am redeemed from every curse I cannot be poor I am blessed I will have exceedingly abundance of wealth because I am righteous and God is pleased in my prosperity I command doors to open for me I command opportunities to come my way for me to make wealth where others invest and fail I will invest and succeed because I am under grace Amen let me teach you what I said this before we close how is grace ministered don't forget what I want to say now because many of you hear this thing and you don't know what to do with it. I want to tell you what I ask us to confess is show me Ephesians 4 29 now look at this very very seriously how is grace ministered let no corrupt words proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers give me Zechariah 4 verse 6 and 7 don't ever forget what you want to see now don't ever forget it you should not forget what you want to hear now read so you answer to me this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel not by might not by power but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts verse 7 who are you O great mountain before Zerubbabel 
you shall become a plain and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace with shouts of what grace. all of you listen to me the reason why you are not seeing grace in your life is because complaint has taken over your mouth you complain a lot he said let no corrupt word which means there are words from your mouth that can corrupt your marriage that can corrupt your business that can corrupt your health he said whatever you say must be what ministers grace so grace is ministered by confession of the word of god Uh, seek one key my mommy look at what you are saying no he said let everything you say impart grace you have to listen you have to learn how to talk 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 anything i don't die oh i don't finish so don't talk like that he said let everything you say let no corrupt word there are words you speak that corrupt your life there are words you speak to edify means to build grace is ministered by confession i am the light of the world i am the head and not the tail i am at the top never at the bottom i am healed i am full of life this is how you release grace we saw in the chapter four he said he will level the mountain by saying what grace 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 to my marriage this is how you should be talking in the whole bible read every book from romance to revelation it begins with grace be with you ends with grace be with you you have to keep saying it but look picking no grace be on you grace be on you Ma mama please forgive me change the way you talk husbands have killed their wives spiritually by their confession foolish woman useless woman you know get sense no grace to you grace to you as you are imparting her grace by your word, she becomes better day and day. My wife will, will, will be one of the most efficient women on earth. Successful in everything. Because day by day, grace to you, my dear. You are able. Grace to you. When I'm praying the night, grace to you, my wife. Grace to you. Strength on your life. When I speak to her, grace to you. Listen to me. This is how you talk. There are things that can't come out of my mouth for my wife or children. He can't, he, 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 that, he cannot. Grace to my wife. Grace to my children. Even in their error, grace be on you. Speak grace to your business. How can a business is the things are tight, jolly tight, jolly tight. This habit you have of anybody you see wants to talk your problem. That is your problem. You talk a lot and you talk wrong things. Any person should not tell you suffer the can't kill me because you want to beg. Chase your, your confession grace to my life grace there are times you feel pain in your body grace grace speaking change the way you talk grace to my health try this thing for one month every morning and evening just say grace to my life see what will happen to your life that you wake up the morning time they don't call it again the kumbaya all things just they upside down how do you think you will say like that you will see nothing when others complain grace to my life i am full of grace i they, i cannot be disadvantaged a grace grace to my home grace to my business grace the church is growing members are increasing grace grace to them grace 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 when you anytime satan brings up something in your mouth to complain just say grace to it you see complain how can i marry this that's kind of woman this that's kind of can not gonna i've told you many times the person you are insulting today can be your helper tomorrow. Be begin to cause you the doctor anyhow. This woman you are saying, foolish woman, good for nothing woman. <laughs> One time I saw a problem in my office. Somebody came to me, was angry. And he was saying that somebody married his wife. How can he marry your wife? He had a girl at his fiance. Matched at her insulted her the girl left him that guy's friend after three years took that girl all in a all in a pastor and trouble that all pastor them prayed with the girl the girl now she's a mama the mommy the carry and go yeah now the man they see that glory 
You see, I, I, I knew her first. I knew her first. I, I see your hand. I knew her first. I, come on, yeah. I knew her first. You like finished product. You don't want to work on raw material. Take the girl. Mold her into a queen. Take that man. Mold him into your king. Say, you are not behaving like a king. Who will make him a king? It's you. I cannot tell my wife, you are not behaving like a good woman. Who will make a good woman? It's my assignment. It's your work. God gave me a heart. We should make ourselves. All of us, we are makers. Make you, I make you, you make me. But today, marriage is only criticism. Anything. Useless man. Useless woman. Nasu you day. Nasu you day. What is it with Nasu you day? Nasu you day. You now see a man on the, off, on the phone for three hours. Listen to me now. <laughs> Wait, listen to me. Listen to me. What kind of woman are you? Don't tell listen to me. You cannot stay quiet. Yeah. Listen to me. Where my talk? Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. My sister. Captain Chu. Quiet. You know why? I will still tell you I'm saying this. We want to express our anger. You will never be, listen to me. You will never build anything if you don't know how to talk. We build by our words. You want to build it. He says the foolish woman destroys her home. And Bible says the fool speaks anyhow. He's just talking. You see that? Not can I this? I saw you there. No, 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 no. I mean, I don't tell you. These people you are saying like that. Just pray that you should not learn the value of something when you lose it. God gives you raw material. Work on it. Work on it. Speak words that turn things to good things. You stand there. You work on it. You will be great. You will be awesome. Don't allow anger. Pain, control your mouth minister grace friend no matter how sad you are if you hear me preach for one hour you live happy when I preach it's like all your troubles vanish because when I'm preaching I speak words that minister grace I speak words that encourage men this is the way you learn how to learn how to talk that is why you have lost many helpers you don't talk well People have left your life because, listen to me, this bad mouth, learn how to talk. He said, let no corrupt word come out of your mouth, but only what builds. You minister grace by speaking word that builds. Speak to your business. You will do well. Grace to you. Grace to my wife. Grace, 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 grace. When I stand here, when I stand here, me, prophet, I've already seen your end. So even when you do some kind of thing now, I say, see you, you waste your time. If I have seen that God has called you to be a great prophet, I don't care how you are fornicating, I will stand with you till you come out from it. I'll keep saying grace. So there are people you expect me to dismiss, and I won't dismiss them. Because you have not seen in them what I've seen. All you have seen is the raw material, but I'm seeing an end product. I'm seeing someone that become a, can become a great pastor. So there are people you give up on that I gave him. I don't give up on. You are angry. We all don't do all. We all don't do. Papa, you see, they will eat. Papa, don't see you never see him. So I stand. So where you condemn, I encourage. I say, don't live this kind of life. Live this kind of life. You will do well. Don't worry. You will stand in life. You will be strong. Go ahead, stand. One time, one one of my sons, one day he came to ask me money for rent, and I realized he was ashamed. He said, "Papa, don't tell me they ask you money." I said, "Neither." I said, "My brother, it will not always be so." Can I shock you? Last year I was doing something. He came to give me Thanksgiving. It was three million. See, three million francs cash. His tight per month is not less than four hundred thousand monthly. That was a man that couldn't pay rent. I kept telling him, don't worry. Keep walking. I'm standing with you. In, learn to speak words that encourage. No word that destroyed. Your husband will leave work there. You enter and say, hey, you don't come into your hand. Yay! Yay! Mm. For marriage, you are you. Yay! Yay! Now I'm saying, I'm married. They be cover my eye. <laughs> the man has been beaten by society. He wants to come and find in his house the only woman that can treat him a king. In his, listen to me. You see in this church? Come, boy. Go back. Come. Go back. 
Come. He says, I've treated him. Bridget, come. Now, we are not saying go so counsel. He the goes now, he don't tire. I've treated him like a slave and a servant. When he goes home, Bridget should treat him as a king. Now, you welcome you with open arms. <laughs> now, now, look, look at something now. Look at something. My treatment broke him. Her treatment raises him. This is a wife. Are you understanding me? Now, it is the same thing. If Bridget now makes mistake in the choir, and all them say, Bri, you are a bad leader. You are not even caring. You don't attend meeting early. When they break her like that in church, even though she has made mistakes, when she come home, what will he tell her? He will embrace her. <laughs> I make you, you make me. I don't tell her. Thank you. Speak words that be you. Someone will come and tell you, I want to die. You say, die now. <laughs> you be first man for die. Hey. <laughs> Minister Grace, can I shock you? Start with yourself. You wake up in the morning and say, Ah, Chai, I'm looking good, though. Always say it. No, ask for them, Bro, how much food day? Someone say, Hmm, you didn't look at her back. Eh. <laughs> what if you ask some a jealous man? Can I tell you something? Do you know that you have never seen your face? You only see your face depending on the kind of mirror. There are mirrors where your face will work very bad. You ask a mirror, your face will so the pair. <laughs> now, then, then there are some mirrors there. Eh, if you look there, you are like the most happy. You say, ah, ah, I so. Wow, my God. Some mirror, they'll be passing. Hey, now who that? <laughs> so, you cannot depend on mirror because mirror, you don't know who made that mirror. Let the word of God be your mirror. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. Oh hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. I am blessed. I am favored. I am honored. Shout amen. amen. No, nobody loves me. Nobody can no Jesus loves me. I am wonderfully made. I am handsome. I am cute. <laughs> Never be down. Look at the money now. My own thing there. You go see now. As I go reach for tap, they go cut water. You see, wait, wait, you see my life. You see my life. No, <laughs> no. If I, even if I reach, they cut water. It means the water, the water was bad water. If I drink it, it will not be good for my system. I am never in disadvantage. If I want to carry water, they cut water. It means the water be in, in, in be dirty. Me, I am never. I, I know so I drunk very badly. <laughs> Are you getting me? So I'm blessed. be asking people do you love me do you love me no do you love me i love myself this is why you keep don't kill yourself for people's appreciation appreciate yourself you are the best of you that god has made i am blessed i am perfect i am good more some things to arrange yes money will arrange that part <laughs> so i'm blessed Ask my wife. I'm always happy. Just ask her. If you come and see me alone in my office, just ask her. She come and see me the night. I'm dancing. You dance now, wait. That's my goodness of God. It is. It, you come and see me like this. In the more. In the more. Love more. Me the then now you don't think now. Play that of that melancholic piano. See my own things in my life. How my things like this? Oh, what have I done to marry this? Love more. <laughs> there's, a, there's another song again. Hey, whoa. They come and tell you now, Asha, thank you. <laughs> See how your face looks like one rat with on fire. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Asha, thank you. Ah, he 
say rejoice. Yakapaka, rejoice, rejoice. This is not the end. Rejoice. I will never be down because God has lifted me high. Sit down, somebody. Hear me? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Ah, listen. Some years ago, I will hold the hand of this, my babe. Hey, where, well, baby? We'll be trekking. Trekking, you know, from church to the house. Enjoy. We just left service where I prophesied. Heal the sick. Heal people with cancer. People with HIV. Prophes- help people. There was no car. We're living in a one-room house. One pallet, two room. The room where you put the bed, you have to stand on the door and jump on the bed. I'm saying, to ask her, there was no space. That's where you enter, where you reach for the also. You just have a door, so mommy, I don't enter. <laughs> to take clothes, listen, to take clothes from the cupboard, you came on the bed and take clothes. That's how it was. But we'll go there and we still help people. Oh, in the other room, they put a four for the oh my heart. That's what you sleep for. If this room will for up, me or my manager, please. We'll be there like that. Some days you wake up, there's no food to eat. I said, Ah, you say, say, pa, you dry, oh. I said, Madam, we'll praise God. Look at her, she's fat today. I thought be dry. It means I don't fat too now. Guess what? We're always happy. Speaking grace to ourselves. Things will get better. Things are fine. Refuse to be depressed. Depression is too expensive. Are you hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Now let me say this to you. Because it's important. There are two things that hinder grace from operating. Number one is pride. Number two is bitterness. Take note of those two things. Pride. Pride is building yourself on your strength. People who don't pray are proud because they think they have enough strength by the flesh to do it. You understand? A humble man pray. James 4, 6. He said, God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. So you are humble. Lord, I need you more. That's humility. I need you more. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Hey, hey, you see humility in expressing dependence on God. Number two, bitterness. Hebrews 12, 15. Bitterness is what? Unforgiveness. Can't you have a free heart? Forgive now. Let your heart be free. Number one, pride. James 4, 6. And number two, bitterness. Hebrews 12, verse 15. You are bitter. No, be open. There is nobody on earth that can earn a place in my heart by doing me evil. The only people who are in my heart are those that did good. If you don't do me good, you do me evil. I delete you. I don't say, say see, it's what you do for me. Ah, listen to me. There are people, pastors who spoke against me, insulted me, and they had trouble in their church. I spent 500000 to solve it. I, he insulted me, oh. Cost me fine saying, a fake man, a fake man, a fake man. After some years, he get a problem. All man living in me, I can help him. I helped him with happiness. I said, my brother, let's leave that thing. He was ashamed. I said, forget that thing. Do you know the sins I committed? God forgive me. Why should I withhold forgiveness from you when I was forgiving all my sins? Be humble. Proud people don't forgive. Proud people don't apologize. Anything is, now you make a man talk. Say, now you, why do you blame people for what you do? A humble man will say, I am wrong. I am sorry. This is humility. I am wrong. I am sorry. Yes, I be wrong, but now because eh, pride don't start. Now because eh, now because if you know be tell, mm-mm, I am wrong. I'm sorry. There's nothing you say after. I am sorry. I am wrong. Forgive me. You don't explain it. I am wrong. I am sorry. That's humility. Humility will say thank you, thank you for helping me. Proud people, no matter how you help them, your help is never enough. I tell you the truth. Be careful. Let me tell you people. Help is not a gift. It's not a privilege. It's a gift. If somebody helps you, with all money get down, he give me just 50,000. See pride. If 50,000 was just, why don't you have it? Be humble. If you want grace to work more, be humble. Be humble. As he said, it's close. Reach out to someone and say, thank you for the thing you have done for me. 
I've told you, always give your parents thanks. Grace will come, long life, prosperity. Honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you. Spiritual and physical. They are just, why are you so bitter, angry? Ah. One time a man came and told me, he said, for one month, he and his wife, they are not talking to each other. One month, they are in the same house. And I chop that. The woman go. The man come. I'm going to do that. What are you doing? There is fellowship which you allow bitterness destroy. I'm not going to that church. I'm not going to that church. There are churches you leave and you lose a grace. Learn how to forgive. Learn how to forgive. Smile. See as you look good. Oh, tell me. Why are you tired? Ah. Only, have, you, have you ever seen a mask which is smiling? So when you frown all the time, what are you in the spirit? Be happy. Smile a bit, smile a bit. Rejoice. Re see, even to laugh, you cannot laugh. Ah, yeah, yeah. Don't be bitter. I'm all life this so all my friends are not married. I never married. That kind of thought will bring bitterness. Always be in a place where you say, Father, thank you. I may not be where I want to be, but I know with you I will get there one day. Have an, ah, stand on your feet. Blessed be your name. Wave your hands and thank the Lord Jesus Christ.